the Latin American city model. The Latin American city model was a model developed by geographers Ernest Griffin and Larry Ford in 1980 to describe the general structure of Latin American cities. As many Latin American cities began to grow and develop during colonial times, their social, political, and economic structure regulated by a set of laws issued by Spain. These laws were called the Laws of the Indies. Looking at the developmental patterns of the Latin American cities as a result of the Laws of the Indies, Griffin and Ford developed a model to describe their structure that can be applied to almost all major Latin American cities. Griffin and Ford's model combines elements of Latin American culture and globalization by combining sectors and concentric zones. The Central Business District Commercial and entertainment hub for the city, home to the best employment opportunities, well-developed infrastructure, and many modes of public transportation. The Market Located on the other side of the CBD and is less industrialized. It's a traditional area for selling food and goods brought from outside the city. This is known as the informal economy. The commercial spine, an extension of the CBD down a major boulevard, home to the city's important amenities like parks, theaters, restaurants, and golf courses. The elite le residential sector surrounds the com commercial spine and is where the upper class reside. Strict zoning and land controls protect elite from incursion by low income squatters. The Zone of Maturity, located around the CBD and is considered an inner city location, has better constructed homes, has middle income residents who filtered in after upper class moved to elite residential sector. Areas of upward mobility, parts of it may be gentrifying. Zone of in situ acc accretion. A transitional area between the zones of maturity and the zone of peripheral squatter settlements. Homes are modest, vary widely in size, type, and quality of materials, and look like they are constantly being constructed or are unfinished. Infrastructure like roads and electricity are only completed in some areas. The zone of peripheral squatter settlements, also called perifico. Located on the edge of cities, occupied by the poorest people, often referred to as slums, favelas, or barridas. Virtually no infrastructure, and many homes are built by their residents using whatever materials they can find. Zone of Peripheral Squatter Settlements Older peripheral squatter settlements are be better developed as residents often continually work to improve the areas, while newer settlements are just starting. Residents typically don't have land tenure or legal ownership of the land, and settle quickly in large groups. This is caused by rapid urbanization. The Zone of Disamenity Squatter communities that are closer to the city runs in two spines from the market to the periphery and is avoided by the wealthy and middle class. Land uses are noisy, polluting, and cater to low-income residents. There's a built on land that is deemed unsuitable for standard homes and businesses, settled because of, of availability to work opportunities in city center, often unstable as, mu as a mudslide, flood, or fire could, would severely endanger these settlements. Middle class residential, where the people who are neither rich nor poor live, separates the rich from the poor, clusters around an agglomeration, like a mall. Residents still live close to the rich, but are distinct from the poor. Industrial Park extends from the market, gives jobs to mid-lower class, good for those without transportation because it's still close to home. Gentrification, located in the zone of maturity, helps increase property values, led to displacement of lower income families and small businesses, occurs when middle class residents renovate lower class housing. Gentrification, typically undertaken by wealthy, wealthier younger couples without children. Effects are debatable. Many believe gentrification helps the city by making it nicer, increasing property values, decreasing crime levels, and encouraging an increased social mix. However, others believe that gentrification has a negative effect because it forces lower income families out of their houses because they can't afford payments anymore.
Here's the Latin American city model one last time. Thank you for watching.